Hi, my name is Mandy. I am with Scott LaRoy Marketing and today is our database overview class. Now, this is your internal database that is included within your command platform. We're going to go over how to get contacts added, how to manage them with tags and organization, even editing how to do things like create relationships between the two as well. And also, if you have any questions about imports and reformatting, um, be sure to drop those in the chat if you're here watching with us live. If you're watching this on recording back on our YouTube, you can always reach out to us at support at scottleroymarketing.com, and we'll do our best to answer every question you got. All right, guys, so we're going to jump on in. You can see we're already signed into command here. The first thing I want to show you it's kind of the back office of things. There's some things hidden back here underneath your name right here in this drop down menu. We're going to go to settings. The things that are back here, most people are not aware of. I just want to show you what all you have available to you as far as making adjustments or adding customization to your database. So this opens into the integrations page. We're actually going to come over here to command settings. Remember, every time you see a little arrow or a little carrot, there's usually a menu hidden there. So we went ahead and dropped that down. And here's contacts. Again, another carrot. So we're going to give that a click. Let another person in the waiting room. Here we go. All right. And so the first thing I want to show you is your contact archive. Now, I'm going to show you functionality of these spaces, but I'm also going to show you how to sort through them and what the purpose of it is. So as you open this up here, what this is, is if you had a contact within your command database over here in the contacts tab on your left hand side, if you had a contact there and you wanted to get rid of it, you first archive it. Well, then it would come and sit right here back in your contacts archive. Then the second step, if you want to permanently get rid of it, you would actually need to delete it out of your archive. So this is kind of a catch all for your contacts just to make sure that you're not losing any important data um, when you're trying to clear out contacts and sometimes you know, errors happen, you change your mind. So this makes sure you're retaining as much information as possible. When you come back here, You'll notice that you do have headers right here, but you can't really search by tags or anything. You're going to be able to sort through the first name and put it in alphabetical order, A to Z, also the same with the last name, but the date cannot be sorted. So it's not going to be back here in the order in which you archived it. So please know that. That's why we have the search feature here. So you can come through and type in things like if you know that the person's name is Abigail, this will come and pull all the Abigails that are here in your contact archive. However, they may have been archived at a different time or, or different dates. Over here on the right, you can see we have your total number of contacts that are sitting here in your archive and you can decide if you want to see up to 10 or 50 at a time. Also 25 just depends. So even if we bump that up to 50, you can see how you can toggle through here through the different pages as well. Now, there is a select all button if you choose to select all and that would choose those 50 that you have on the page. You can also restore all the ones you've selected in bulk. You can delete permanently all the ones you've selected in bulk or you can also come here and restore or delete one at a time. These are what those icons are there for you. The trash can is the delete and the restore button will restore it back into your contacts tab over here on the left. So just know whenever you archive a contact, any automated marketing that you had already set up like a smart plan or a campaign, it will be removed from them once they move into the contacts archive. If you come back here to restore a contact, you will need to restore also those marketing plans that you had already put into place. You'll need to manually add those back. Okay, Anita, Anita, I'm glad you asked how do you archive. I'm going to jump in the consumer, excuse me, I'm going to jump into the contacts tab in just a minute and show you how to do all of that. I just want to show you the back end so when you hear me reference your contacts archive, you're familiar with what it looks like back here. So. This is how you do that. Um, it is a two-step process to permanent, permanently delete the contact archive. It's just that first stop shop. Side note as well, if you ever come to do an import and you're, you go and check your import failed log, you want to know why some of the contacts have not been imported. And it may say that it's a duplicate. 
chances are it's probably sitting back here in your contact archive because you thought you had already removed them from your contacts tab. But since it's a two step process to get rid of a contact, you first archive, then you delete. It's sitting back here in your contact archive and you just need to fully delete it. Then you'll be able to re-import re that contact. OK, so that is your contact archive back here. The next button is a database wipe. Please proceed with caution here. There is not an undo button for deleting all of your contacts. It is permanent. This will take all of your contacts out of that contact archive we just viewed, and it will delete them permanently. The other option here is to archive all contacts. This will clear all of your contacts out of your contacts tab and put them back into that contact archive we just saw. So that at least has an undo button because you can go to your contacts archive and move them all back if you need to. This does not, no undo button. Before you touch any of these or you before you even start archiving contacts out of your contacts database, we highly recommend exporting a copy of your contacts first. That way you have a backup and you will not lose any data. And I will show you how to export before the end of class today, okay? All right, also, if you are here and you do not see the option to select one of these, that is likely that you are on a team and you don't have that functionality due to your permissions. So if you don't, if these are grayed out on your screen, don't worry, it's usually just because you are on a base, a team and it's due to your permissions, okay? Next is gonna be contacts tags. Contact tags are an amazing way to make sure that you have organized your contacts. If you can think of it, tag it. <laughs> um, anything you can think of, birthday, um, hobby, if they're a buyer, if they're a seller, where you know them from, um, where the lead source is, because you can add multiple contacts, but lead source, you can only put one, and you might know that person from different places or want to remember that they maybe have a, like a mutual friend or something like that with you, so make a tag for it. You can come here and search the tags that are already created. Over here on the right, you can create a fresh tag if you would like, as well. If we click that, it lets you create the tag name. And you can also choose the different color that you would like that tag to appear. Some people like to color code their databases. So this is pretty helpful. Also, the ones that are already here, you'll notice some are created by the system. These are created within your command system. You cannot edit these. They will always be teal in color. You'll notice that the edit pencil over here on the right and the trash can are grayed out. You can't edit those. You don't have to use them. You just can't change them, okay? So you can remove them or unremove them from contacts, but you just can't delete them out of the system altogether. They are standards. So you can also see where this particular agent has created her own tags. It will say created by you. You will notice that these are editable. I can come in here with a pencil, change any part of the wording. I can change the color that is associated with it as well. And when I save that, it will update any contact that already has that tag on it. So any contacts previously tagged with this tag of birthday in purple, if I change it to holiday and make it orange, all of those contacts will now be updated with the tag holiday orange, okay? Just to let you know. So that's super handy dandy. You don't have to go back and manually update those on your contacts, okay? All right. Then as we move through the tags, just know that you can customize these as much as you want. It's an easy way to filter through your contacts database and to find information as well. It also makes it easier when you go to create smart plans or campaigns um, by tagging your people in your database. Okay. All right. Next is we're, we're going to skip lead management. By the way, that's for teams. It's not necessarily for individual agents. And we're going to go down here to lead sources. This is where you got your contact from. It does let you choose by category and which lead source that you're viewing. Over on the right, you can also search through them as well. And you can create a custom source. You can put a source name and decide which category that that falls under for yourself and create that source tag. You will also notice some of these are still created by the system, just like the contacts tabs. Those will not be editable. Um, and this, the category and the source are already set. You also have an option down here to move through all of them. You can view up to 100 on this particular page. OK, and it also gives you the date that they were created. All right, so lead source difference between the contacts tag. Just know that lead source, you can only add one lead source 
per contact, it's always good to have that on file. It will affect your reports tab when it shows how, you know, what percentage of your database comes from what source. So it is important to have lead sources on your contacts. However, we highly recommend making those contact tags as well if you have additional things that you want to remember about those contacts because it's a little easier to, to filter through those. Okay. All right. Custom fields. This is pretty awesome. With custom fields, these are different fields of information that you can have on your contact profiles within your contact database. So maybe there is something in your niche or in your market that it's a piece of information you like to collect about your clients that you like to know about them. This particular agent likes to keep up with pet names or maybe children names as well. Just something that may make your um, connection with those clients a little deeper, right? Well, you can come back here and create that custom field. You can also edit and trash these just like we could in the other parts that we were looking at, like the contact tags as well. You can individually choose one or choose all. You will notice that some options did populate. We can delete these or we can edit them, okay? It's a little different than the contact tags. Remember I told you on the contact tags, if you edit them, it will update all the contacts that were on that tag previously. Well, when it comes to the custom fields, because it's a custom field, because it is different data that you're entering into those fields, if I were to come in here and edit like, pet names let's just open that up and instead of it having it a text field where i can free type whatever i want you know fluffy and marshmallows names in here if i change that to a drop down which wouldn't make much sense for pet names but just go with me here if i change that to a drop down and only made it selectable for like one or two names then it will remove that data from any contact that already had this custom field because now the custom field has been edited, it has been changed to be a different type of field, and so it will remove that data on previous contacts that are already have this custom field on it, okay? So just be careful when you're editing these. Let's say that you want to come in here and you're doing a pie giveaway. I just want to show you how to create a custom field from scratch. So you can come up here, create a custom field, and let's say you're going to do a pie giveaway, and so that people don't get too crazy with the different types of pies that you can get, you're only going to offer them choices from three different ones. So we're going to make this a drop down option and say that we're going to give three different options here, a cherry pie, apple pie, and maybe blueberry. Okay. So we're going to give them three options. We know that we can get those three pies on demand from our baker. Those are going to be the only options here. And oh, good, Danielle, I'm sorry you lost sound. If everybody else can hear me, good. But if somebody else is having issues, definitely put it in the chat. I want to make sure everybody can hear me. Okay. So let's say you're doing your pie giveaway, right? These are the three pies that you can get. You've made this into a drop down menu style. That means when I add this, when I create this, my contacts in command, I can now go and add this information into that contact profile, even though that field was not there previously. It's a custom field. You can also make this a default custom field. This means it would appear on every single contact within your command database. You don't have to necessarily go back and add this extra field underneath additional information. The field will always populate on the contact profile. And so you could even import information into that custom field, okay? So just know you can make this a default if you want. We're not going to today. We're just going to create the basic one. And there it goes. It got the green banner of success. This pie giveaway default is here. And I will go ahead and show you when we're editing the contact how you can add that information in for that custom field. OK. All right. And as we move on, um, for my logs is the last thing I want to show you back here under command settings. It's right here. Again, carrot means we have a little hidden menu. This is for your imports and your exports. Okay. So for your imports, it will show you the status of your import. It will tell you the day it started, the day it completed, and the timestamp. Because sometimes if it's a larger file, if you have a large database you're importing, it could take maybe an hour um, to import. It will trickle in. Usually they're done pretty simultaneously. You can tell that this one handled it within one minute's time and it was 100, well, 357 contacts altogether. It will also tell you how many of those contacts imported, 133. It will tell you how many failed. 224 of the 357 did fail. 
here's the beauty. Over here, this error file, you can download this. When you download it in the far right-hand column, usually somewhere around BG, it will tell you exactly why that contact did not import. You can easily get it, get it resolved, get it corrected, um, find the issue, and then you can try to re-import those contacts again and you should be successful, okay? All right, good, Tia. Thank you for letting me know you can hear me. Awesome. It also gives you an option to download your original file here as well, which is super helpful. Over here, you can choose to see how many um, import logs you have up to 100 per page, and you can toggle back and forth between the pages if you need to. Okay, exports. It's going to be the exact same thing. It shows you the status, date, shows you the contents of the exported um, file as well. It will give you an option to download that file too. And so you can see up to 100 per page on here. And it's super handy too, in case you needed to come back here and reference an export that was done. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go over to our contacts tab. I'm going to go into how the the majority of it functions, just give you the basic overview, overview, and then we're going to jump in on how to actually find objects in your database, how to filter them um, by tags and things like that, how to make bulk changes, um, and just jump into a lot of information here. Again, on imports, guys, um, over here on the right hand side, I'm going to start with telling you about these particular buttons over here on the right. This is an import button. This is for bulk imports, more than one, okay? You have a couple options here. Both are going to be pretty, uh, pretty big time drainers. <laughs> the first is going to be download a template. You can download that template and it will have all the columns for you. Um, let's see, I've got it here for you so I can show you what that looks like. You can see the two headers that are up here. It is a big spreadsheet, guys. It's a lot of columns. You can get a lot of information on here. And sometimes it's suggesting things to you that you would not have thought to collect from that person. So it is great to download that database um, template right there and make sure that you add your contacts to it if you don't already have like a, a, a main file that you're keeping those in. And you can import from that. Please know there's some detailed import reformatting that needs to be done on that particular spreadsheet. Um, we can help you with that. There is a tip video on our YouTube channel if you wanna see how to do it yourself. However, you can always reach out to us and we'll be happy to do that for you. And then we send the file back to you for your approval before we re-import it, okay? You can also use the file that you're already using. As long as it's like an Excel file, you can go ahead and upload it here. The system does prefer CSV files. That is just comma separated value. I wanna show you literally what that means. Here on the template, you can see over here in the tags column, let me pump up the font for you so you can see it. Comma separated value means the value in the cell is separated with a comma. So for this particular one, you can see the tags are lender, comma, space, vendor. You would just want to make sure that you are separating each tag with a comma and a space. That's just a fancy way of them saying it, CSV, okay? Just good to remember it's an Excel file to make it super simple, okay? Also, you can add tags as many as you want to each contact. We highly recommend you doing that on your spreadsheet before you import. It's easier to do it this way than to go back and try to manually add tags to every single one of your contacts that you that you had, especially if you have a larger database. We can add bulk tags for you. Um, that is one tag that applies to every single person on that particular file. But if you have unique ones that you want tagged specifically to each contact, you can add them right into a co column named tags. Right down here, instead of using the template, when I was talking about it using your own file, let's say you have your own file. It doesn't have as many columns. All you have is first name, last name, cell phone, and personal email. Right here, you can just come and add a column and start adding your tag, okay? That way you've got them on there. If you have any questions, again, reach out to us and we can help you with that. I just wanna make sure that you guys know to add tags when you're importing. At the end of the day, imports can take a lot of time. Feel free to reach out to us with your command username and password and your Excel file, and we'll be happy to reformat and import that for you, okay? 
All right. And yes, John, this recording will be up on our YouTube channel within 24 hours. And our YouTube channel is in the chat. If not, let me drop it back in there for you. This includes our YouTube channel link and also our email address that I just dropped in the chat for you guys. So you can always check there for, you're welcome, for our class archives and quick tip videos, okay? So just know we can help you with imports. It can be a time sucker. Over here on the right, you can add a contact individually one at a time. We're going to see the same form in just a minute when I show you how to edit a contact. So I'm not going to go through it fully right here, but you can add an individual contact right there. And the three dots, typical of command, whenever you see three dots, you have another menu, right? So over here are your export options that I was mentioning to you before. The first option is to export all of your own contacts. Everything that you own within this database is going to be exported on this export file, okay? If you are an individual agent, that's the option you would use. If you happen to be a team and you have a team profile right up here underneath your profile and you're under your team, you can switch over to that and you will have other options that will say export all own contacts and that is only gonna be the contacts on that team database that you personally own. If you're only the assignee, they will not export, okay? And if you're, depending on your permissions for that team, like if you're the Rainmaker, you will notice three other options on this menu that you don't currently see on my screen. And those are options to actually export your entire team database since you're the Rainmaker. Okay, so just in case you're seeing something extra on your screen, don't panic. This is just the view that you see on your screen is for an individual agent. The other two options are export mailing labels. You'll notice the two differences. One is CSV, which is what we were just looking at in Excel. That's going to be an editable file. I can make changes. It's going to be in a spreadsheet format. And um, it's actually really great to export that first if you're doing mailing labels because you can go in there and make any changes that you need to make sure they're gonna print right before you actually do export the PDF. PDF is a fixed document. You cannot edit it. Can't make changes. It is what it is. Okay. All right. Those are your export options over there. In just a minute, I will show you the bulk option that will let you do individual or bulk contacts, not your entire database. Again, these export options are for your entire database. Okay. All right, just like the other places we were looking, you will notice you have a search feature here on your database. You can choose to only search through names, last name, email, and address, or everything. We highly recommend keeping it on everything because it will go through everything. The only thing I've noticed that it won't pick through if you type something in here to pull it up is it actually have not seen it pull from a custom field yet. Remember the pie field that we added? Um, I've seen that be filled out before for a contact and say Apple. And when I came in here to search for Apple, it did not pull. So hopefully that will be a feature that's coming soon, but just know that this is um, a great way to search by searching everything. Let's say that you had a phone number show up, you have a new phone yourself and you haven't put your contacts in it and a new phone number shows up and you can't remember who it belongs to. You can come in here and type in the last four digits and there it is, it pulls up, oh, that's your contact, Sally Sample. It pulled that from her phone number. You can also do um, different portions of email addresses. If I type in fake, you will see that it did pull these contacts that somewhere in that contact, it has fake written there um, within their contact profile, okay? So great search feature. I'm going to skip over um, filters and smart view because I'm fixing to jump into that with you guys. These are another way to search through your filters or search through your contacts, but I want to show you your headers and columns really quick first. You can notice over here on the right, we can customize these particular columns that are showing. If you come in here, you can choose on the left what, what you want to show on your columns. Let's say you actually want to see when they were last contacted, and I can select that and then move it up here on the right and make sure that's my first column that's going to show. The next thing I want to show might be who owns this. Um, since we're an individual agent, this is more for team. It would let you choose owner or assignee and show you who they belong to. Or maybe I want to see tags right after last contacted. So you can move these and customize them however you would like and you would hit apply and it'll update your contacts here. You'll notice it did move last contacted to the 
the first column and move tags to the second. Okay, you can also view it in table view or tile view. Table view is what you're looking at. I tend to prefer this one because it lets you sort through and shuffle through your columns. Okay, so that tends to be better for me, but you do have the option to look in tile view and it's a little thicker. It doesn't give you the sorting options that I prefer. Um, it's just really what you like to look at. Okay. So over here on the left hand side, we are, we're going to choose table. Um, Lynch, a rainmaker is going to be a team lead. Like if they own a team and they've created it in command, we call that the rainmaker. And Anitha, these settings will not save each time we have to customize it. Actually, Anitha, that is what a smart view is for. And I'm fixing to show you how to make those. So you will not have to do this every time you come in. There is a workaround there. Shortcut. I'm fixing to show you. It's going to be great. It'll make your day. <laughs> um, over here on the right, you, if you're working with a bigger database than seven, hopefully you are, you can click this and view up to 500 contacts at a time. And you do have your little carrots here where you can thumb back through different pages, you know, all the way to the front, all the way to the back, okay? Three little dots to the far right, right hand side are going to be specific to that particular contact's name. So you can edit, add an activity to the timeline. You can make a copy and share this with someone else, add a note, archive this one individual contact, view the smart plans attached to this contact, add a smart plan and unmark them as a lead. Um, I'm going to go into all of those things right now. Um, as soon as we cover filters, just know this is a shortcut for that one particular contact right here on the right. Command likes to offer multiple ways to do the same task for your convenience so that you can always easily find what it is you're trying to do. You will see most, most of those items repeated in the bulk menu I'm fixing to show you that's hidden on this page, okay? All right, let's go back to filters really quick. Filters is a way you can sort through these contacts, all right? So if we open this up, it shows you all the different fields that you can sort through with your contacts. Right here is all contacts. I can view all of them. If I want to just look through leads only, I can choose that right here as well. Leads are going to be the ones with the tiny L right here on the, on the right hand side of the name. If you hover over it, it says lead. This means that you have not had the real estate conversation with them yet. You can unmark or remark contacts as a lead as you choose, but they will automatically come into your database with that little L when they're coming in from like a landing page or when they're captured from your website, okay? They will come in with that L as a lead. All right, going back to filters, you can choose to filter by tag. You can sit here and type in any different name that you have um, for tags that you've created. It lets me know that I don't have any open house tags. Put my name in, there's a tag. So I can select that and it will show me tags, show me contacts with that tag that's already on it. I can come over here to company and start typing in a name of the company that you've put in on the contacts. Created. And also last contacted and modified will give you the options longer than or within the last. So if I want to see my contacts that are modified within the last number of days, weeks, months, or years, I can put that in as a criteria for filter and it'll show me those contacts that match that. Okay. Then you also have lead source. You can start typing those in. You see the ones with the the category that it was created within, that's on the right hand side and the name of the lead source is on the left. So you can filter by those, but remember each contact can only have one lead source. So there might be more things that I'm trying to pull in filtering. That's why we recommend the tags. And then also recently active gives you longer than within last. Date of birth, similar field. Um, you can longer than within the last or within the next, okay? Primary address, primary phone, and primary email are going to work very similar to that search feature I was already showing you. You can put in a portion of what you're searching for, and it will pull those particular contacts. Has neighborhoods is fantastic. If you're going to set them up on a monthly neighborhood nurture, that smart plan that will send them out information based on their neighborhoods or neighborhoods of choice um, every month or even bi-monthly, you need 
to make sure that your contact has a neighborhood on it. And we'll show you how to make sure that that is on there today. But this is how you can filter and find the ones who don't. I can come in here and say, no, the ones that do not have neighborhoods, and it will pull all of my contacts up for me that do not have neighborhoods. So I'll know which ones to go and work, okay? Also over here to branded to me, if I put yes, branded to me, these are going to be clients or consumers that have either logged in to my KW, KW consumer mobile app or my website. Um, if they've created a profile on either one of those and chosen to brand that app to me, chosen me as their agent on those, then they will show up in this search, okay? I can mark yes, branded to me, and they will show up. So just to give you a sample of how a filter will work, let's say I wanna come in here and I want to find leads that are not branded to me on my website or my app yet. So I'm gonna choose leads only, and I want to choose branded to me, no. This will show me people that I need to have a real estate conversation with and I need to get them involved on my, my mobile app so that we can be involved together on their search and I can help customize their search for them. So I'm gonna hit apply and you will notice it will start updating and it pulled the contacts that have the L for the lead but they are not showing that tiny check mark that shows whether or not they are branded to me. Now. I want to make this a smart view. I don't want to have to go through that every single time, just like Anita was talking about. When I come in here, I want to see when they were last contacted first. I want to see that they are leads, and I want to know that they are the ones that have not been branded to me yet. I know that I need to have that mobile app conversation. I can come right here under smart views, and if you toggle all the way to the top, I can create smart view right there and name this leads need app. I can even set it as the default smart view. If you set it as the default smart view, this will be the view every single time you come into command. I don't particularly want that to be my default. I'm just gonna save it as a regular smart view. And at any time I want to, I can come through here, click on this and it'll give me that particular view, okay? It's pretty amazing um, how this works. And I just want you to know that you can come in here and even manage smart views. Um, if you would like, you can edit and trash them. You can revert back to the original. And even the ones down here, like my Mandy, that's a current default, you can apply a new default by selecting it and apply new default at the bottom, okay? All right, we're gonna hit refresh on that and go back to our regular view here. as it takes its sweet time, <laughs> there we go. All right, so it came back to our default here, which is good, that's right where I wanted it. Now I want to show you guys your bulk menu action um, menu, your bulk action menu. Let me say that in the correct order, I'm getting too fast for myself. All right, and so it's hidden right here in this general area. I can select one contact or I can select all, I can select multiple and you'll see that that bulk action appears for each one, no matter which one you're doing. And in this bulk action, you'll notice a lot of common things that we were seeing over here on this three dots are right here. I can add an activity, add a note, and add tags. I can even remove tags down here at the bottom. If I wanna choose a bulk number, remember it'll let you see up to 500 per page, right? So I can do these activities for up to 500 contacts at a time. So I can add tags and remove them, add activity, add note. Those are things that apply to their timeline within that, com that contact, which I'll show you in just a moment. Got to clear my frog in my throat, sorry. <laughs> and then I can add to an email list, which was super helpful. If you're doing campaigns, you'll need the email list to be able to add them to a campaign. You can also add to a smart plan from here. And remember, up to 500 at a time. This is a great way if you're working with a larger database to get everybody set up on a smart plan quickly. You can archive. Remember, we were talking about the archive for in the back. This is how you would move bulk contacts back to the archive. You can also change account. This is if you're on a team and you're looking to change that contact and actually remove it from your personal profile and move it over to your team profile. There is another way to do that. You can leave a copy of your your contacts within your personal profile, export a copy of them, 
reformat it and import it into your team contacts. Um, so there's two ways to go about doing this. Both ways have pros and cons. Reach out to us if you have any questions and we can actually assist you with that, give you some very good information and some articles to let you consider which one you would like to do, okay? Here, you're seeing those export options again. Remember, export the entire ones you've selected so far right here, export the mailing labels, and export mailing labels as PDF. The export mailing labels right here is the CSV, the one that's editable, okay? So same three options we saw over here on the three dots in the far right-hand circle. However, these are only going to be for the contacts that you've selected right here, not for your entire database. You can also bulk mark as a lead to let you know I need to have that conversation, that real estate conversation with them. Remove tags we already covered. You can send a text message to these people if you have Twilio set up. And then also you can share a copy. This is for like sharing an actual copy and giving it to a friend to put in their phone. The copy that you send to that other person you will not get updates. If they edit the information from their copy, it does not update it automatically within your database, okay? It's not, it's not a shared contact and your edits will change that one contact within both of your databases. This is as if you wrote down that contact information and handed it to another person. They go off, put it wherever they want to, in their phone, in their iPad, whatever. You will never see that information again. It is theirs to keep. Whatever changes they want to make to it, they can, okay? Um, down here is unmark as a lead, just like we had the option to mark as a lead, you can say I've had the conversation with them and unmark them as a lead, okay? One thing I think I skipped over, I want to make sure that you're aware of, this little tiny check mark right here, this is what it is when I'm referring to say that they've logged into either your website, they've made their own consumer profile on your website, or they have also downloaded your KW Consumer Mobile app and branded it to you. They will then have that little check mark right here. Okay, so you heard me reference it several times. I just want to make sure you know what that mark looks like. Okay. All right. So now we're actually going to jump in to the different, the actual contact profile. I want to show you what all information is hidden in here. I also want to show you how to edit it itself as well. Um, and a couple of pro tips as we go along. We're gonna grab Joe Bob sample here. All you gotta do is click on the name and it will open the contact profile for you. You'll notice across the top, I've got some quick links. I can go back to my contacts, previous contact or next contact in line, or I can come over here and search contacts again. Don't panic when it says no options, you just start typing and it'll start suggesting, okay? So we're now inside Joe Bob Sample's contact profile. You can tell this person is a lead because of the L. You can tell they have already gotten our app and branded it to us with a little check mark. FYI, guys, we have a consumer mobile class. Highly, highly recommend you check that out or at least look at the archive that is on our YouTube channel. There's so much stuff you can do to personalize it for your clients and be in contact with them. It really will just be huge leverage for your business. Um, Coming back down below that, you can see this contact's health score as well. You can mark or unmark them as a lead. Let's say we've already had the conversation with Joe Bob, so we're going to unmark him as a lead. Their tags will appear right below that. Primary contact information, their email will, will appear right here. Just below that, you'll begin seeing a lead source, what account and who owns this particular contact. Remember, we are on an individual agent's profile, so she is the owner and the account that it is under. For neighborhoods, this particular person does not live in an address that is in a marked neighborhood at this time. So you do not have a primary neighborhood. However, we've come in here and added neighborhoods for this contact. You can add neighborhoods by clicking right here on this button. You can type in the name or find on the map. You can search by location or just hold down the control key and zoom in. And now for this particular person, you'll notice the green blocks are the neighborhoods. See how their particular location is not within a neighborhood. That's why you do not see a primary neighborhood on file. However, the green boxes are right here for all the neighborhoods around them. So if they want to add that information, you can just click. And you'll notice a purple check mark being added. That means you've selected it. You'll also see it populate right down here at the bottom. Let's say you checked one and you didn't want it. You can either unclick here or hit the X here to remove them. 
there it goes. Um, and that way you can actually update the, the neighborhoods that are on the file for this. So we're going to hit save. Notice it refreshed over here on the right. It let us know in the timeline, subscribe to that particular neighborhood. Okay, actually, excuse me, they were already subscribed to the neighborhood I chose. So the last update on the timeline is May 10th. My apologies. Um, I just saw it blink and assumed it was updating to that neighborhood, but I chose one that had already been right here in the blocks. You'll also notice a difference in the neighborhoods. Some are with the green background, some are with a white background. The ones with a green background are the ones the agent adds from right here within command doing the same steps we just showed. The ones with a white background are going to be the ones that the consumer chose on their app or the website. Whenever they were logged in, they went through and decided to follow a new neighborhood, and so it populates right here. You also have a copy link feature right here. Pretty handy dandy. If you drop that in a new tab, it will show you the neighborhood market snap for that specific neighborhood. This one's gonna pull from Red Rock Canyon as you can see right there across the top. So if we go over to a new tab and bless it, give it a, just a second to open. There we go. All right, so this is showing us the neighborhood snap for that particular neighborhood. So you can just send that link out to anybody you would like to, drop it on your social media, whatever you would like to do to add value to people. It even shows you highlights for that area to restaurants and shopping as well. It's pretty great. And at the bottom, it'll have a lead capture page for you as well. All right, let's go back to the contact. As we scroll down more, you'll see additional contact information. If they had a preferred contact method, additional emails or phone numbers on file, this is where those would be located. You will notice the home address is here and it's marked primary. It's also the same as their mailing address. Below is the legal name. That's what will show on their documents under opportunities. So if they have a different legal name than what you're normally used to calling them, you would want to make sure that legal name appears right here within their contact profile. You can add social profiles for them as well and any about information, including custom fields, will show down here on the bottom left. I'm fixing to show you how to edit all of those fields and add relationships as well. But for the time being, let me come back up to the top and show you the right hand side of your contact. Oh. And the little three dots right here, another shortcut to add to a smart plan. I can change the account and move it to my team if I want. I can resubscribe them to, e to emails. Big note here, you will see this on every contact. It does not mean that that contact has unsubscribed from any of your emails. You will see it on every contact, okay? So don't panic thinking that everybody has unsubscribed from you. <laughs> um, you can also archive directly from right here as well, okay? That pencil is the edit but pencil we'll jump into in just a second. On the right hand side, you have timeline that shows you all the activity for this particular contact. I can choose the date range. I can choose the activity type. Let's say I want to, where's my little thing? Favorited listings. I wanna know what listings this particular person has liked within their app. So I can come right here, choose favorited listings and it will show those all to me right here condensed. The little heart means they put a little heart beside this within their app, it shows me the date and time that they've done that. Pretty great, pretty nifty. So you can keep track and have big brother access, okay? Again, another great reason to get that branded app of yours out and in the hands of people so that you can be involved in their search. Next are gonna be opportunities. If this contact had any opportunities, they would be here. You can sort through them or create an opportunity. While this button does work, we highly recommend go over to your opportunities tab to create the opportunity here. This is going to be a limited view. Over here on the right, smart plans. These are any smart plans that this particular contact has already been added to. You can remove them right here at the trash can. You can click the carrot to see what this smart plan does. I can even add them to a smart plan right from here, okay? Tasks as well. Any task pertaining to this particular contact will show right here or I can create a new one. Notes are the same way. Any particular notes that you would like to add to this person, um, Usually you can click add a note, there we go, and add the note title and the description, add a note, and it would place it right here, okay? Saved searches, another awesome feature of command. Saved searches are gonna be very similar to what you set up in MLS um, for your clients. Like if you're, you know, they're looking for three bed, two bath in a garage, you can set up that criteria and the system right here in this saved search, it will update them as 
properties come on the market that fit their criteria. You can create that saved search right here for them or they can create it for themselves through the app. When, it's ha when it has the pencil and the trash can grayed out like this, those were created by the contact themselves through the app. You can see created by Joe Bob Sample. So I can't edit those. The, the consumer did that for themselves, okay? And then down at the bottom, you'll notice this one was created by the agent because I have editability through that. I can come in here and edit it. I can trash it, okay? If I were gonna create a saved search, um, we have a tip video that goes over, it's again, it's the consumer mobile app class that goes over this in detail on how to create this saved search. But you would choose all the criteria for this particular person and hit next. Um, it's actually not gonna let me because I didn't choose anything. Hold on, let me just throw something in here really quick. I wanna show you the, the common, like how often they can receive them. So if you want them to receive email notifications, it can be instant, daily, weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly. Let's say it's a seller of yours and they want to know when other listings and competition come on the market in a certain area for them, you can set them up on a safe search. It doesn't just have to be a buyer, right? So you can create that all right here. The catch is this person has to have a consumer login to your app or website. They have to have had that created for them to receive the emails. If you create a, a saved search for them, they will get that first email saying, congratulations, you have created a saved search. You're going to start receiving updates. However, if they have not created their own login to your website or your consumer mobile app, they will not get the rest of the emails because they haven't consented to receive them. Okay. So if you have any questions about those, let us know. That's just a very common question we get about safe searches. So I wanted to make sure you knew. Um, Daniela said they can view a note we leave for them. Absolutely not. Daniela, these notes are for your internal eyes only. Okay. So the, con the contact themselves cannot see this information that is showing here within your command database. That's just for you. Okay. All right, now that we've gone every, over everything in the contact profile, I want to quickly show you how to edit. You would click that pencil and come in here. The full name, you'll notice it puts the name all together. If you were doing an import and you separated the first and last name, just know it merges it all into one field here. Okay, you can add a relationship. A lot of people ask about spouses and if you should keep them on the same contact. They would have like Joe and Sally sample in this first field um, and then try to put all their information together. Just to give you a pro tip on that, if Joe Bob and Sally only share one email address and one phone number, which means you're only dealing with one of the spouses and that is the only one that wants to be contacted and have marketing sent to them, fine. Go ahead and keep them under one contact profile, okay? Because you only have that one piece of contact primary information with the email and one primary piece of information with the phone number. So they can be under one profile. That's fine. However, if both Joe and Sally both want to receive marketing, both want to get the housing updates, both want to be included in the text and the emails that you send out, and you need to send documents to both of them, right? then you will want to have their own contact profile. Joe Bob will have one and Sally will have one. It just gets a little hairy when you go to print out mailing labels. If you choose to do print mailing and you want to do mailing labels and you don't want them to have separate mailing labels, you will just want to make sure you create the relationship between them and you can do that right here. So I can choose relationship. It can be any kind of relationship. They have tons and tons of options here. In this particular case, Sally just happens to be Joe Bob's spouse and you put your cursor here. It does say no options, but remember, begin typing and it'll start suggesting. So I'm going to start typing in Sally and it will bring up that contact for me and it already adds it. I don't even have to do that. Um, I can remove it right here, but as long as it's sitting right here and I click save at the end, it will add Sally as the um, relationship. Okay, next are going to be primary pieces of information, primary email, primary phone. Going down, lead source. I can select from a list, that list that we were looking at on the back office, or I can even select from contacts. This particular person, I happen to know through Pablo Consuelo. He referred Joe Bob to us. So in this, in theory, this is all demo, <laughs> but so I can actually put 
Pablo's name here to always remember that that was my lead source. This is a great way to keep up with megaphones that you have created within your sphere of influence and how many people that they are referring to you. It's a great way to grow your business through referrals if you're wanting to. So next, I can mark it as a lead again. I can add tags. Again, it lets you choose from the ones that are created, but remember, maybe I want to create a tag that isn't here and the open house tag wasn't here. So I can create a custom tag right here from within this contact, choose the color and add it to this particular contact, okay? And it'll create that tag. If you go down further, add more information, it opens some more carrots for us here, additional contact information. I can choose the preferred method of contact. I wanna point out, do not contact right here. Guys, if, if a person is a do not contact for you, for any reason, pro tip, go grab that primary contact information from up here in these top fields, grab the phone number, grab the email, remove it from the primary information and come put it in the additional email, additional phone number information. That way you get to retain your information and you don't lose any data. However, a smart plan, if you accidentally add them to it or accidentally add them to a campaign, there won't be primary information on the file, so they won't get sent anything by accident, okay? All right, so just please keep that in mind. <laughs> it helps a lot. Primary address. If I were to come in here and start typing for primary address, it can be home, work, rental, or a vacation. But if I just start typing, this is pulling from Google, and it will begin to pull up the addresses that are available that match that. You can create it manually. However, again, pulling from Google, it's going to be pretty accurate, and you can just choose the one that's already there and have everything in place. Also, mark it as the mailing address. Um, that will make it easier on you when it comes to campaigns or mail outs or things that you're doing. Um, go ahead and mark that primary address as the mailing address if it is, okay? Social profiles. If you have those for your contacts, you can add them here. You can choose between Facebook, Twitter, Insta, um, just a lot of different ones now that they've added here. Oh my goodness, that said MySpace. Sorry, throwback for a moment. I did not know that that was an option. That's been a minute. Okay, showing my age. Let me get back on, on track. All right, so if you don't have social profiles for your contacts, the cool thing is when you go to do a campaign and you're trying to target those particular people, you can still do that as long as their, their social profiles have been set up underneath the primary contact information you have on file. For instance, Joe Bob, if he set up his social pro platform on Facebook, if he set up that account with this particular email address that's on file here, you can still target them through campaigns even if you don't have their social profiles on their contact profile, okay? I hope that makes sense, but that's pretty nifty. Down here under about information, this is where you put in that legal name. You have an extra note section to add any description that you would like. Keep their birthday, keep their home anniversary. You can add more relationships right here underneath um, this particular spot if you have their brother in your database or a parent, anything like that. You can also add the work title here and just below is your custom field. Remember, we just created a custom field. He doesn't already have one on his profile, so we're gonna add it for him. And from that, I can choose the ones I've already created right here. There's our pie giveaway, so we're gonna add it. And it'll let me choose from the drop down menu one of the three options. So we're gonna say Cherry is his particular favorite. So you can add custom fields from here and click Save. It'll save all the changes we just made to Joe Bob's profile. Just for good measure, I'm going to hit refresh at the top of my window just so it keeps refreshing. There we go. Awesome. Oh, look, on the timeline, it showed us where we viewed that neighborhood. Remember when I popped it into the extra tab up here? It documented that. Again, Big Brother access when you get them onto your app. And if we scroll down to the bottom, I want to show you it did update with the custom fields right here, and it also updated with the relationship. Now Sally samples profile since she was already in our database. I can click this and it'll take me right on over to her particular profile right here in command. I don't have to go back out to my contacts and search from her. I can bounce back in between both of those contacts. Pretty handy dandy. All right, guys, that is how you would edit that contact. I'm just scrolling through my notes really quick and make sure I've covered everything for you. Yes, I have. Um, I do want to tell you, 
if you are just getting to work in your database, we do have other quick tip videos on our um, YouTube channel that shows you how to maneuver through tags, um, create tags. There's just all kinds of things you can get in here and specialize in. Definitely check those out. Also, the archives of this class are available on our YouTube channel as well. If you have any questions at all, guys, email us support at scottleroymarketing.com. We'll be happy to get in touch with you and help you with anything that you've got going on when it comes to your database and smart plans. Guys, leverage smart plans for your database. It is an incredible way to nurture your database. It is um, a way to work smarter, not harder. It will it's like a drip campaign. It will constantly reach out to those contacts for you or make tasks for you. It'll email them. If you have Twilio set up, it'll text them. Um, it'll remind you to call them every quarter. There's just so much. And for the birthday and the home anniversary smart plan that Keller Williams has formed, just really recommend checking that out and the monthly neighborhood nurture. Those are three that are great leverage for your marketing. Okay. And for your database and your brand. All right, guys, that is it for our class. Thank you for watching with us. If you're here live and have questions, hang tight. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Otherwise, you guys are free to leave. Thank you for watching.